Hello, I'm John Walker. I'm 71 years old and I've enjoyed a relatively well above average health for all of 69 years. And that's due primarily to the somewhat active lifestyle of scuba diving, float plane flying, coaching my daughters, soccer teams, fishing, and uh, hiking, camping, and all kinds of other activities outdoors that didn't require a pen, pencil, piece of paper, or a computer. Well, all of that changed in December of 2011. That's when I experienced a weight loss of about 20 pounds in less than a month. Well, needless to say, I was somewhat alarmed, as was my primary care doctor. His first impression was that I was bleeding internally. So he did all the necessary tests to confirm that I was not. And because uh, that came back negative, uh, I was subjected to practically every other organ and bodily function test known to man. And they discovered absolutely nothing other than some mild osteoarthritis that I already knew about. Well, my rheumatologist decided to upgrade that a little bit, so she decided that I had rheumatoid arthritis and recommended that I go on methotrexate uh, and Embro and uh, uh, a couple of other things, which I flatly rejected. I said, uh, no, I'll take care of this dietarily, which I did. I basically completely revamped my diet. Uh, based basically on Joanna Budwick's uh, concept of uh, how to clean up the damage you've already done and how to avoid further damage to your cells. And uh, that worked out very well, so much for my rheumatoid arthritis. Well, I still had the blood, blood, blood problem. And uh, so I began uh, getting transfusions every week or two, and uh, finally I was uh, subjected to a botched bone marrow biopsy, which landed me in emergency for two days, in a wheelchair for about two or three weeks, and then a walker for another couple of weeks. Well, <clears throat> that hematologist, oncologist, decided to resign from that hospital for some reason or another. I don't know, maybe she found a better job, but in any event, the bone marrow biopsy did produce a diagnosis which was consistent with high-grade myelodysplastic syndrome, REAB-1-2. Well, of course, I've never heard of uh, MDS, so uh, I began researching on the computer. Uh, everything I could find about MDS and all I could find was uh, uh, some probable causes of it uh, and who might be subjected to that disease. Nothing of any substance, no help at all uh, was forthcoming from my research. So I uh, opted to continue with blood transfusions until I found what I inherently knew was somewhere out there, and that was treatment for my MDS on a naturopathic basis. Well, the recommendation for chemotherapy was flatly rejected, obviously, since I'm not oriented that way, and uh, a bunch of other uh, minor therapies were suggested and discarded equally. So. Uh, it wasn't until May of 2013 that I happened to be listening to Coast to Coast Radio one evening and I heard Dr. Steve Pachinik describe NBI and OsteoK. And he described not only that uh, how effective OsteoK was for osteoarthritis, uh, I mean for uh, uh, for females that had uh, bone problems. But uh, he also described the fact that the uh, research and clinical trials had been expanded to include uh, MDS, AML, HSS, and a couple of other very rare uh, diseases 
and it was somewhat effective. Uh, about 56% of the people who uh, used it were uh, able to benefit from it. And I decided that, well, 56% was a heck of a lot better than 2%, which is what chemotherapy will offer you. So uh, I decided to log on to the website, and I devoured every word on it, every video, every interview with uh, by uh, Dr. Newstead, and uh, I immediately ordered my first round of uh, OsteoK minis. Now I began taking those, and at the time when I began taking them, both my white blood cells and my platelets were way below uh, the bottom of the normal range. Well, within six weeks, my white blood cells were in the center of the normal, and my platelets were also in the center of normal. So it was happening. I confirmed by that that I was in that 56 percentile. So. I continued to take the OSTEOK, and uh, I was looking for improvement in my red blood cell because that seemed to be where my problem was, uh, the remaining problem. I didn't see any movement at all in the uh, red blood cells, but I did experience an increase in the amount of time that elapsed between blood transfusions. Well, that's a positive indicator in and of itself because it shows that something is happening to the red blood cells, whether it's uh, showing up on uh, my blood chemistry or not, something was happening. And uh, so I continued to take uh, the OCOK, and uh, uh, I experienced a gradual increase in the time between uh, transfusions. And in the interim, I had changed uh, uh, hematologist, oncologist twice. Uh, once because, of course, the first one uh, resigned from hospital, as I mentioned earlier. The second one is uh, when I moved down from Central Florida to South Florida. And uh, both of them happened to be uh, receptive to my self-medication. Of course, they knew that uh, I had declined chemotherapy, and so that wasn't even a question, and they didn't have anything else to offer, so uh, I guess that's probably why they were uh, willing to cooperate. Well, at any rate, uh, that brings us up to date pretty much. Uh, my blood chemistry is getting better uh, all the time. Uh, the last cells have decreased from somewhere in the 27, 28 range, down to three, which is excellent, absolutely uh, breathtaking to me. And uh, things just seem to continually improve, a little bit at a time, but hey, when you're dealing with something like this, you can't rush things. So I'm willing to continue with uh, the OSTEOK. What I did is uh, I started out originally with a recommended uh, dosage, which was uh, 45,000 microkilograms a day, and uh, I did double that, I increased that uh, around the first of the year, and I experienced uh, uh, the drop in uh, blast cells uh, as a result of that, so I'm considering now uh, jumping it up from 90,000 uh, microkilograms kilograms to 135 to uh, <coughs> see if there's any further improvement. <coughs> haven't made that determination yet, but we'll see how things go. Well, that brings us uh, pretty much up to date. I, uh, I'm not expecting a cure for my MDS. Um, I'll certainly gladly accept it if that happens. But that would be wonderful. But what I'm shooting for right now is independence of uh, transfusions. Uh, and the indications are that I'm gradually getting there. Whether or not I'll actually achieve that, I don't know, but uh, I'm giving it my best shot. And I think uh, I probably have the best thing going for me, which is the OCOK minis. 
and I'm taking those religiously, and it's making a difference, making a big difference. So that's uh, about all I have to say for right now. I'll uh, be following this video up with uh, another video probably in about three months uh, to report any improvements then if there are any. If not, then I'll just wait until there are and then I'll report those. So thank you very much for watching and listening. And uh, uh, by the way, I have recommended the Osseo K to all the females in uh, my family that are approaching 40 years old or have osteoporosis and uh, recommended the change from the Fosamax or whatever they're taking, if they're taking anything, to the uh, osteo -K because of this 87% uh, uh, improvement in bone density and, and whatnot. And I've gotten uh, a lot of takers, believe it or not. And the uh, females who either haven't reached the age of 40 or who don't have the problem yet, uh, a couple of them are taking it prophylactically. So, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, they'll benefit from it, as I am benefiting from it. And uh, uh, if I get any reports from them, I'll include those in my next video. Thank you very much for watching and listening, and good luck with your problem, whatever it might be.